Estamos en contra de nuestra población, en contra de los narcotraficantes y tal vez un 1% a favor. Entonces no es una guerra civil, sino yo la denomino una guerra contra la sociedad civil. Y es contra la sociedad civil porque están corrompiendo nuestras instituciones, se está corrompiendo la política, están financiando gente para que llegue al Parlamento en Colombia, están financiando la inseguridad en nuestras ciudades que se comienza a convertir en los grandes problemas. Miremos en California o en Centroamérica el tema de las maras, el tema de las pandillas juveniles, que es un fenómeno que se viene eh, eh, produciendo ya a nivel mundial. Entonces, esto es lo que yo denomino la guerra contra la sociedad civil. Y ya para terminar, lo que necesitamos entonces nosotros es tener la conciencia de que esa nueva amenaza mundial a través de estas redes de criminalidad internacionales depende de todos nosotros y a través de la cooperación perseguirlas. Perseguirlas desde el punto de vista de seguridad, cómo podemos hacer intercambio de información, cómo ajustamos nuestros organismos de inteligencia y nuestras fuerzas militares para que el Estado responda a esos temas. Segundo, tenemos nosotros que buscar cooperación a través también de la inversión social en muchos de nuestros países, porque al fin y al cabo si logramos nosotros hacer las inversiones en, en aquellos sectores más pobres y más marginados, como hacía mención yo, del desarrollo alternativo, en buena parte vamos a golpear el negocio. Y por último, hacer un esfuerzo común en un compromiso de que sabemos que si no hacemos esos ajustes al interior de nuestros propios países, si no hacemos los ajustes en nuestras instituciones, si no buscamos mecanismos para bloquear ese tráfico de dinero en el mundo, no vamos a lograr combatir precisamente este enemigo común que es el narcoterrorismo, que es el gran financiador de buena parte de los problemas que hoy estamos viviendo. Y yo simplemente diría que a través de esa cooperación, de esa integración de todos los países, aquí ninguno estamos ajenos al problema, porque a veces se piensa que es un problema de uno o de otro, no. Al final, los países de tránsito terminan involucrados en el negocio, los países de tránsito terminan consumiendo, hoy tenemos nuevos actores como nuevas mafias, y por eso diría yo que en el seno de organizaciones como Naciones Unidas, este tiene que ser un tema inaplazable si queremos defender las futuras generaciones. Muchas gracias. Monsieur le ministre des Affaires étrangères de Bosnie-Herzégovine, Sven Alcalaj, euh, vous êtes vous au cœur de problématiques de sécurité euh, internationale avec des euh, mafias transnationales, parfois, et vous avez à gérer euh, ces problématiques. Comment euh, vous orientez euh, votre action de ce point de vue-là Thank you very much, and uh, at the outset, I would like uh, to thank very much uh, to organizers, to Amadeus Institute, and to express my appreciation for the work they are doing. I believe the hearing uh, this, uh, hearing the panelists, my colleagues and friends uh, on this and the other panels, uh, we are able to look into the very complex issue of this world, problems we are facing, and this panel, which is dealing with emergency risks, is an fo uh, excellent forum to look at overall risks that we are facing, and especially for small, from the position of the small countries like Bosnia-Herzegovina. It has been 20 years since the end of the Cold War and collapse of bilateral a bipolar world and uh, 10 years since 9-11 uh, events so uh, the international scene international community should be looking finding the ways to confront all these threats which are emerging from the terrorists and uh, endangering the security of the nations of the populations 
confronting our main goal, which is to create continuous economic development, functional economic and democratic institutions, respect for human rights and freedoms and stability and peace. Obviously, that uh, very complex situation, bilateral, regional, and international interests and relations, which make the realization of those issues very complex, uh, uh, are before us. We have to organize ourselves within new world order, as someone mentioned here, and in the global world, which is so much interconnected, when there is no borders for these uh, emerging threats, which become more and more transnational. So what we need, we should need more cooperation and mutual understanding on bilateral, regional, and multilateral levels in order to face and react properly on those uh, threats and challenges we are facing, facing now. So I see, uh, as uh, Mr. Bittman mentioned at the very outset, the organization of United Nations as a real universal organization which was created to prevent wars and conflicts and to lead the world on the way of development and security. Of course, there are important uh, regional, sub-regional organizations, as, as they were mentioned here. But uh, for countries, small countries like Bosnia and Herzegovina, I believe the Forum of United Nations and its organizations, uh, especially Security Council, present such an important instrument and tool to work towards all these uh, uh, important issues and prevent this threats. Someone was mentioning the prevention as important uh, uh, element in uh, confronting the, the uh, opposing the healing the wounds. Uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina is one of the countries which faced difficult uh, situation and uh, terrible war in the early 90s. Practically what uh, that happened to use the literary terms that Berlin Wall fell on Bosnia and created such a terrible situation in the Balkans, which had to be confronted only by uh, United Nations. This was uh, the only credible organization that could react in such issue. And uh, seeing the Bosnia Herzegovina at that time being uh, no, uh, subject of number of resolution in the Security Council trying to prevent uh, terrible killings, genocide, ethnic cleansing. Uh, we, we felt that at that time, in the early 90s, United Nations maybe didn't have uh, enough experience to deal with a similar situation. NATO was uh, never had out of uh, area response. So we were uh, confronted with a very complex international scene. So one country, in order to prevent all these hor horrible crimes like genocide, ethnic cleansing, war crimes, uh, crimes against humanity, uh, if it cannot deal, and this usually happens in the conflict situation, I believe the collective action should be through the Security Council, through the United Nations, should be the right response in order uh, to prevent all these horrible crimes to happen. We have a uh, very good legal ground in Charter, the UN Charter, in Chapter 7, which should be used when a peaceful means cannot uh, help to resolve this problem. Mr. Leroy was mentioning non-military and military approach. Of course, when we cannot, uh, uh, peaceful means uh, cannot, can, uh, can fail and ca uh, cannot prevent these uh, horrible crimes, I believe uh, United Nations, through its means, can 
and have the means to, to uh, act. We, we've seen a similar situation in a recent events in Libya. And uh, what was important and what we missed at the time in the very 90s, which eventually happened in the latest events, uh, uh, I can take Lib Libya with, because this is the most recent event. Guidelines for use of military force were defined. Uh, and then with the help of uh, spe uh, specific agencies and uh, groups in the United Nations, the building available capacity, willingness of the, of the people who are and the organization, regional organization who are willing to act. And what was the most difficult thing in all of this is to generate political will to act. This is the biggest and the hardest part of the whole puzzle, how and when United Nations would and uh, with such which force they would act. That's why uh, we should build standards. We should be looking into uh, all of this, that United Nations uh, is still the best forum and will be the best credibility to act in a certain manner. And Bosnia Herzegovina being a member now in these two past years as a Security uh, Council member, I think uh, uh, faced a number of crisis situations from southern Sudan, from uh, other difficult issues. And I would like to use this opportunity to congratulate Morocco on being elected to the Security Council. And I'm proud to say that we supported Morocco in this endeavor uh, because we believe that Morocco will be contributing member to the peace and security in the world. So once again, uh, best regards and congratulations on, on their election. Because if small country like Bosnia, which was uh, subject of these resolutions uh, in Security Council, can be elected after certain years to become one of the important players of decision makers in Security Council, I think that shows the best how the Forum of Security Council in the United Nations can help a benefiting, uh, creating and maintaining peace, security. In the, and therefore, we believe the preventive diplomacy as a method is uh, very important and we should focus on uh, uh, preventive diplomacy as a such. In my first remarks, uh, uh, after we were elected in Security Council, uh, I said Bosnia faced difficult times. There was a very, in the 90s, very clear writing on the wall what's going to happen, but the reaction, and there was no political will to react. So I'm glad that uh, uh, we, uh, by our participation in Security Council, managed to contribute in a, in a way to <clears throat> work on the preventive diplomacy and uh, during our presidency of Security Council 2011 we organized a high level session uh, entitled post-conflict peace building uh, institution building and preventive diplomacy we believe that uh, this is something that uh, countries should work very much into this because we would first of all save a lot of lives we would uh, prevent a lot of destructions and the uh, reaction of uh, international community in post-conflict situation would be uh, much less and uh, could uh, exercise more uh, work and more energy into uh, democracy building which is the most important issue. It's been uh, 15 years when the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina ended. We are still working on a building institutions and democratic ways through different means, elections, but we work very closely with uh, United Nations and also on within our regional level to create a regional cooperation among the countries in the region. Because you have to create first peace with your neighbors and then enlarge it further on. So uh, the role of United Nations regional organization and sub-regional organizations is a key element in uh, preventing all these emerging threats.
that uh, are uh, there before any country, before any region, before uh, they are not single problem of any country, of any nation. They are our problems and we have to confront them and face them. Uh, major foreign policy goal of Bosnia and Herzegovina is to join uh, those uh, uh, international organizations, European Union, NATO, and to work closely uh, to help other countries uh, where the conflicts are, where these organizations are acting like NATO in Afghanistan and Iraq and elsewhere because it's, uh, it's our obligation because NATO was there for us when we need it. Now, I think uh, uh, our number of missions that we have in uh, Syria alone, in, in number of uh, police missions in Somalia, uh, I think it's our uh, part of this capacity building and what was mentioned here, uh, joining together in moving, moving towards create more peace and security and which would definitely benefit of economic development and better prosperity for the people. Thank you. Monsieur l'ambassadeur uh, Akin Saya, uh, vous dirigez uh, actuellement uh, un, un think tank uh, qui est le Institute for uh, Security Studies et vous avez un, un regard depuis l'Afrique sur ces questions-là. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous uh, dire ce qu'il en est de votre point de vue It's working. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, um, panelists. Uh, since I'm speaking for the first time in plenary, I want to first of all express appreciation to Amandios Institute uh, for inviting me. Um, <clears throat> this uh, forum has become a center, a, a go-to center for reflections and consultation, and I want to thank the organizers. I used to be the Nigerian ambassador and permanent representative to the African Union and the ECA, during which I played a very important role as a key intergovernmental player several times I shared the session of the Permanent Representatives Committee and the Peace and Security Council. And I was also modestly uh, part of uh, the development of the African peace and security architecture, uh, which uh, is the, the organ, very important of that organ for conflict prevention, conflict resolution, and conflict management. Let me start by saying that these are exciting times for Africa. The population is growing, organization processes are ongoing, there's management of, uh, management of uh, macroeconomic management has improved, there's the youth bulge, the continental organizations are approaching the issues of Africa from the principle of non-indifference. But of course there are challenges. Africa has its own problems. Problems arising from interstate conflicts, problems arising from disease development, problems that arose out of post-election conflicts, even though there have been a lot of improvements in the last 10 years about democratic frameworks in Africa. But there are still a lot of problems as regards the post-conflict, uh, post-election conflicts. But what is important is that the African are grappling with the problems at national, sub-regional, and at continental levels. But there are new risks, there are new challenges that have further exacerbated the problems of Africa. And this is why in my new cap, as the director for one of the leading Pan-African institutes in Africa, Institute for Security Studies, 
we put our focus on human security. Human security not in the context of the state-centric engagement, but involving as stakeholders, civil societies, uh, regional integration, I mean, uh, regional economic communities, governments, and also uh, the research institutions in preferring solutions uh, to African problems, and of course the emerging risks that has, is further exacerbating these problems. But the question that we first ask is, when we talk about collective security, security for what? And security for whom? I mean, these are things that will give us a broader perspective of collective security. People are not just comfortable with secured environments, but also in terms of the criminal justice, food security, and the other elements that make an individual secure in his environment. And these are the, these are the issues that allows holistic, comprehensive, and strategic approach to issues that daily confront Africa. The Organization of African Unity transformed into African Union has transformed in its intervention from non-intervention in the affairs of member states to the principle of non-indifference. And we have seen this in terms of the various organs in the engagement. But the new elements of the security, the, 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 the emerging issues, adding to these risks, as I said, has further exacerbated the problems of Africa. The 9-11 event, which happened 10 years ago, is to my mind a new element, it was an element, it was an affront on the economic and the military powers of the United States. They are symbols of an assault. But 10 years after the 9-11, after, after the, uh, the, uh, the it has not stopped. There are no borders to terrorism. We have seen a lot of the globalization of terrorism and also what I call the indigenization of terrorism, as we have recently seen with the Boko Haram onslaughts in Nigeria. How do we address these issues? President Bush, former onslaught, war on terrorism, war on terrorists, is, is now giving way to more strategic, more holistic, and comprehensive approach to dealing with the issues. And we must look at these issues not only from the historical perspectives, but also as a phenomenon, terrorism as a phenomenon. And that this element, this approach in terms of looking at the greater depth of what constitutes an affront, what constitutes terrorism, or what, are, what is technology doing to these strategists, it's important that we look at this in a holistic fashion. In terms of that holistic fashion, there's also the element of the governance structures in our various countries, particularly in Africa. Corruption that has been mentioned, the issue of drug trafficking, money laundering, human trafficking. And there have been a lot of engagements at the level of regional economic communities. The ECOWAS has a very ambitious uh, a, a program to address maritime security, Ditto for IGAD, SADC, and some other regional economic communications. But while looking at all those norm setting, because even in the African Union, you have conventions, you have quite a lot of um, uh, norms, normative frameworks, but the implementation of these norms setting 
is also key, is critical. The Arab uprising or the North African revolution, what we have seen, to my mind, is the beginning of the end of the 9-11 era. These are exciting times for Africa. People are demonstrating their will. Democracy is coming to roots in spite of all these problems. But what is very important is that there's need for partners. There's need for the international community to respond positively to all the engagements uh, that African countries are trying to do in fighting terror. We need to turn the tide and start to fight terror for freedom, not erode freedom to fight terror. Turning the tide is very important. And what is it? Let's take the example of Nigeria. Years back, people believed that terrorism is alien to Nigeria. But this has changed the tides. People are fighting for the resources, demand. I'm talking about the, the, the delta in the delta region of Nigeria, resource control led to what became an affront. But of course, government dealt with the situation not by fighting terrorists, but also by developing a holistic approach to, to be able to deal with the problem. That is why the problem of the Niger, Niger Delta has subsided. But what have we seen in the context of the Boko Harams? It started as a, a sect, an Islamic state, that is against the values Western values. That was what was said. They are dispersed. They are not concentrated as the Delta. But also, they have indicated that the political ex aspect of their onslaught, there was also the socio-economic element. So this is what I refers to, and of course, the linkages, there have been reported linkages to El Shabaab and the element of piracy, the kidnapping that we are seeing in the horn. But what I'm saying is, now is that terrorism has no boundaries. Terrorism has to be approached from a holistic angle. Terrorism has to be approached in the context of strategies to take into account technology, to take into account that people are also, the, the so-called terrorists are also changing their tactics. So what is important, the UK is a very good example of that comprehensive strategy in dealing with the issues, emerging issues of terrorism in the environment. And I, was, I believe that recently also, this issue was taken to the United Nations. There was a General Assembly resolution that declares a moratorium on incursions because of the Olympics that is expected next year. So this is a clear example of building strategies and developing strategies at national, sub-regional, continental levels to be able to complement what is being taken at the international level. I believe that these are areas that the security sector reforms the criminal justice, the police, the intelligence is not meeting force with force, but there's need for a lot of this effort. Now, I will end up with the need for capacity building. I think one of the distinguished panelists mentioned that. In our negotiations, in Africa's negotiations on international instruments, how empowered is Africa? The, the MPT negotiations is coming, the arms treaty negotiations is coming, how capacitated are African countries? I think it's important that in coining out a strategy to combat these emerging issues, there's need to build capacity. There's also the need for international cooperation. I thank you, Mr. Moderator.